I watched a clip of you in an interview, and that was a big thing, vibes. You're big vibes guy, right? You, you said something, there was a quote, something like, you know, you can have the business thing, but the real key is to have the business thing and the vibe. Where do vibes come from? Where does that, and you know, vibes obviously, right? That's like soul, that can be all that stuff. Yeah, that's that? a good question. Where is it, I mean, it's the room has to have it. Yeah. Empty, it's kind of back to history. Sure. That helps. You can try to do it without that. Yeah. I'm not saying that no, and any new venue can't have vibes because it doesn't have a history, but right. it helps to go in like Floyd played here and Jerry's favorite room and Ozzy and Clapton and, yeah. and Bowie and Jagger. Like, that makes a difference. Absolutely. Uh, Wetlands had that. Yeah. You know? um, and it's the crowd and the audience and the, the staff helps impact the energy. And it's All hard. It's not always friendly. perfect. Every one of your security guys and gals that I met, super friendly. But see, here's this is what I'm getting at, right? Is that I think that's a top-down thing, right? Because yes, a Oops. building, a physical space, new or old, can have good vibes, good bones, all that kind of stuff. But you know, you work with bringing people together. You work with creating a community in a lot of different ways. And yeah. my sense is that 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 vibe top permeates. Down. Yeah, that it does probably. Yeah. So where does that um, come from? We're dealing with that in our country right now. Um, where, uh, well, you know, starting off at Wetlands, um, yeah. learned a lot. You know, the venue didn't have the perfect sound and lights and sight lines. Yeah. It was like, I don't know if you ever went, but it was a I little did, off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like this with normal. Mo on, oh, a, yeah. on a New Year's. Yeah. I did that. Monkeys my, on Ecstasy? Yeah, my yeah. first <laughs> my um, first, my first intro cool. to Wetlands. They just played the cap. Rob's first show's back. It was did really they? cool. Oh, shit. Because uh, cigarette cancer. But, um, All right, right. but he's back. Um so wetlands like we had to try harder because uh the room didn't have the natural sight lines mm -hmm. and uh so and we learned that vibe because you couldn't always see the show so good so you'd go maybe have a drink or hang right. out in the basement lounge yeah or by the vw bus and like hang out i meet a lot of people like oh i met my wife there but when you go to like the per like Bowery Ballroom is a more classic perfect concert venue than Wetlands was or Irving, but I don't think a lot of people went to Bowery. They just you just watch the show, right? You're not meeting your wife, so like Wetlands almost caused you to intermingle. Yeah, because you weren't just locked in in one spot watching the show. Right. So like I tried after Wetlands went away after nine eleven, and started conceiving up Brooklyn Bowl. And working with uh, Charlie Ryan and ran Wetlands to help, and we kind of conceived things. Like, the idea was to keep the best of Wetlands. It was a bit of a village. And the wood and the brick and that vibe of Brooklyn Bowl is a bit of a village. Different areas, yep. pockets to move around to. Yeah. We believe set breaks are important. Longer shows get a chance to interact. Yep. And, um, but also put in, like, perfect sight lines. <laughs> Into like yeah. which Wellings didn't have. So Brooklyn Bowl, and we had food, we got the Blue Ribbon guys, Brooklyn Wellings didn't have any good air conditioning. Yeah. Wellings didn't really have that. We added then the visual, the bowling's awesome, but in a lot of ways it's less about the bowling than it's about what the geography of bowling, the lanes enable visually. Right, right. Just means, uh, I'm like, is there a picture here? Um, but um, that's really powerful what you can do yeah. with the visual. They're 100 feet wide, the screens, and they're 140 feet from your eyes. Like, people sort of say, oh, it's like Epcot for adults. And, like, yeah, it kind of is. Like, yeah. And you can show the live show, IMAG, yeah. which you'll see on the screens in the arena. We do that right. at the bowl. Right. And it's awesome. Yeah. So we're integrating things like that yep. into a layout for a live music experience. It's awesome. And trying to take the vibe that we had at Wetlands and how we treated people, where we had to work harder to co overcompensate because it wasn't perfectly awesome in a venue. Yeah. And we tried to bring it together, right? So we yeah. did, like, kept the vibe, how we treated people. Yeah. And we had to work harder. Yeah. Because we didn't have the Bowery Ballroom sightlines. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then build a new place with the Bowery Ballroom sightlines and Blue Ribbon food and some bowling and the screens and great, you know, old barn and treat people the same, like Wetlands. Internally, though, does that make sense? It does absolutely. But internally, for you, do you think vibes is something that you are born with, or you can learn? I mean, it. My, here's Both. my, my impression is that like, I think you bring that to a situation, right? You you coordinated fairly well. You've worked with. You're working with artists, management, 
customers, fans, right? The whole thing. And again, that's top down. So the guy behind all of that's got to bring something to it. It's the attitude. You, you, I was standing on the street talking to Walt, Amy's, Amy's buddy Walt, who used to be with her dad, Levon, right? Yeah. And you rolled up, smiling. You said hello to everybody right there on the way in, said hello, shook hands with everybody, made eye contact with everybody. And at the end of the night, you came back out, again, saying hi to everybody. There were there were a few fans, a couple of stragglers waiting there. I think you signed a guitar or something. Right. You did a little signing. Again, smiling, how are you? Eye contact, in the car and you're gone. That's top down creating a vibe right. for somebody. I'm so listening. I'm digest I'm like shh Shit, we I hope we get this on tape. And well we are right now, man. And, get this. and you should film this. And I passed you at the bar. Yeah, smiling, you know, hanging out with a group, and well, it's, it's I think good you, night. Yeah. yeah, it was a yeah, it was a good night. Absolutely, no, I mean, you can't, you know, those, time, those yeah. vibes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. So, how do you balance all that? But no, no, fuck that. Let's go back to the vibes thing. Your boy, I is both. I mean, you got to be somewhat born with it, be able to stay here. I try not to go too far up, like, yeah, because right. I've been there and the shit goes wrong. And right. Did the Fairly Well shows, the Grateful Dead's 50th anniversary stuff. Yeah. But I'm still doing dead cover bands. So I don't have to. Yeah. And then when things go wrong, I've been through just doing all the, sh- you know, I've been through a lot. So I try to stay here, not too up, not too down either. When it's tough, yeah. Still can be tough, Intra- independent entrepreneurial stuff. Rock and roll, like things go wrong a lot, and and yeah. so it's a lot of it's how you respond to that. 